We were told that the financial companies have learned their lessons. The Fed would stop anything bad from happening to us. Unlike last time, where few even knew the Fed existed, we are totally guaranteed to see stocks rising forever because, quote, they would never let it fall. No facts, no truth, just excuses. But that's why you came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we're going to talk about the bubble trouble. We've got serious problems today, and of course, more people will jump in, more people will ride the wave, and it may continue to go up and up. But what are we talking about exactly? Are all stocks going up? Are the majority of stocks going up? Or are we seeing something that makes 2020 look like child's play? I've got some very interesting information here because we are going to get into the details that are not described in the alternative news. And of course, the financial media will Will not touch it. I'm talking about what's laying underneath this system that makes it stink, that makes it reek, and you will be sickened by it if you look just one level deeper. So let's get into that. I wanted to start by taking a look at this. Billionaire investor Leon Cooperman says Fed relief efforts have created a speculative bubble. I've talked about this numerous times, of course, but now we have somebody like Cooperman actually saying the same thing. Cooperman said markets are not focused on debt in the US that's growing at a pace far exceeding the general economy. The investor said that he sees the continued, quote, artificial support for the economy as negative. Of course, this is what we have highlighted many times before. You know it. I know it, and now we have Cooperman on board. That, which he's referring to in this paragraph here, is a growth rate that in debt far in excess of what the economy is growing at, and I think that's going to be a problem down the road. Of course, you can't service that debt, even if interest rates are rock bottom as we know they are, and of course they're trying to get that to go below, we'll see what happens, doesn't matter. You still got to service this debt, and the amount of debt that's been piling up is historic and that cannot be paid back. The interest payments are going to be unpayable. The interest payments, forget about the principal, we're talking about the interest payments and that is a cycle that you cannot get out of. It's a spiral downward into destruction, but they don't want to talk about that because the Federal Reserve will just buy it all. I've seen this so many times before from people who say they know what they're talking about, that the Federal Reserve will buy the debt so we never have to worry. Haven't you heard about that happening some point in history? And it kind of created a real, real boom in the markets, but not the boom that you were looking at. I'm talking about the boom in wheelbarrows. Wheelbarrows are going to be the next big thing because people are going to have to take their cash, roll it around in one of those. It's insane. There is a lot in this article here, and I definitely suggest you read it. It's talking about the derivatives, particularly as it relates to the commercial mortgage-backed securities, to the malls, to derivatives, and it goes into some depth here. But I'm just going to touch on a couple points. So far this year, 16% of all retail industry loans are delinquent. Imagine that, 16%, and we've only just begun. In a previous video, I talked about how 25% or so of the hotels are not being able to pay their mortgages. This is so huge. And people think, well, my home is always going to go up in value because more people are coming in. You know what? Right now, I'm, a, I'm just going to interrupt myself. I'm going to do an entire video about that subject. Okay. So we're not going to get into that, but understand that just because people are moving into your city does not mean that the prices will go up. Okay. Totally so important, but let me cover it in a different video. Take a look. Major retailers, including JCPenney and others, filed for bankruptcy and new tenant demand for mall space has never been weaker. This is important because it's not as if one person moves out, the other moves in, and you're good. Vacancy rates remain low. There's always going to be some vacancy. There's always going to be some turnover. But when you have a problem that cannot be resolved by printing money, what do you do? Carl Icahn said the malls were way overbuilt to begin with, but additionally, the real problem was that malls and physical retail 
were constantly losing ground to online shopping. They get into this, the CMBX6. This is an index I've shown you before, how many people have been shorting this. It's very important. People have made a lot of money doing so, by the way. There's a lot of depth in, that, in this article about that, but let me just touch on this. The CMBX6 index is intended to track a basket of bond products, each of which contains bundles of individual mortgages to commercial borrowers, more than 2,000 in total. Those products are then sliced into brackets known as tranches and assigned credit ratings rating from AAA to B according to the perceived level of risk. And it goes on essentially telling you that there are so many within this CMBX6 that are connected to retail, something like 40%. So if retail is going down, then this CMBX6 is going down with it. So there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of investors that are going to short it as well. That's going to put additional pressure on the system, on the derivatives, and things could spiral because, oh, if the six is doing this, what about the 10? What about the others? And they're looking at all of these trades and they're going to be profiting off of it. Some people lose their shirt trying to do so. But the point here is that when we look at the financial markets, you have to understand it's all about the weakest link. It's not about how big Apple stock is going to get. And I'll show you how big it's been getting recently, but it's about the weakest link. Huge news here out of Bloomberg. Big banks sit on $250 billion of murkiest trades. Uh-oh, could this really be the case? Are they not supposed to be safe and secure these days? Banks boosted level three assets about 20% in the first half. Some assets got harder to price, but banks pursued risk too. This is what I highlighted in the previous video as well. They're taking the risk, but you look around, nobody cares. Nobody cares. And why? Because they're trying to make money. They're trying to exacerbate the problems instead of trying to highlight where the risks are. Part of investing is knowing where the risks are, not always where should I put my money into the next ETF, into this next stock, which of course, there's only a handful that are actually performing very well. The pile of murkiest trades at global banks along the bane of regulators got much bigger. We know this. Barclays, Citigroup, BMP, Society General reported a surge of more than 20% in their most opaque assets during the chaotic first half of 2020. The banks are now sitting on hard to value trades that they say are worth about $250 billion, including categories that gained notoriety during the financial crisis, such as complex debt securities here at the Money GPS. I like to call it garbage. You call it whatever you want. I once actually spoke with an individual who read a chapter of my book. This person worked at one of the big banks in Canada. I talked about derivatives, how they're so terrible and so on, and he didn't really like that at all. I'm not sure what he did in his position, but he wasn't too happy. You call them what you want. Call them complex debt securities. Oh, complex debt securities. Well, that really needs a professional to be taking care of that. I'll give my money to this person. I'll let them leverage it to the maximum. I I don't need to know what's inside because it's so complex. If you call it what it is, it starts to make a lot of sense and it's garbage. We learned about this in 2008 and they're making the same mistakes today. They think because it's rated AAA that somehow they'll be shielded from all the other garbage that's underneath it. That's not the way it works. It will find its way to the higher rated garbage. That's the way this is. I have documented this so many times before. I've looked into the financial crisis, shown you the examples after examples, and you need to know how serious this is because it is going to affect the markets that we have today in 2021. The, the higher this goes, it's going to be a real big problem as these risks start to pile up. I don't think we can get there in the 2020 timeframe. We'll see what happens, but we're already well past the halfway point. I'm not much for timing anyway, but the bubble can certainly grow between now and then.
This is just a chart showing you the IMF and their prediction 2020 global contraction 4.9%. This is possible. We'll see what happens. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. We know that it is significant, but a global scale isn't really something that I like to look at too much because each area is different. But it is important nonetheless to understand how these economies interact with each other. The growth has been unbelievable for Apple. But look at their PE. You can see how ridiculous it is. 35 practically. We're almost there. 35. And that has changed just since March. It has accelerated beyond anyone's imagination. They do a stock split. They announce it. And the stock goes crazy. Stock splits are not supposed to be something that people rush into. Wow, it's fantastic. Oh my God, I'm going to invest now. It might get a little bit of buzz, but it's ridiculous. It's added something hundreds of billions of dollars since that moment. Look at what all the analysts are saying about Apple stock. Keep buying, keep buying, keep buying, keep buying. This is what they are saying. Of course, if the stock started to go down significantly, they would change their minds very soon. It's not about the revenue. It's not about what they're doing in their business. It's all about what's going on with the central bank. Look at the NASDAQ, look at that chart. Of course, you're comparing it with the red line there, which is bonds, specifically the 10-year yield. But just look how exaggerated it is, not to mention the divergence between these two. It's just unprecedented in history. The red line is the breadth and the blue line is the S&P 500. And when we see these divergences, this tends to be a problem as we had earlier in the year. It's just comparing those two. Will it be the same? I'm not so sure, but we got problems ahead. There's no doubt about that. Everybody has been talking about how wonderful Apple has been performing throughout this period. But if you really wanted to make some gains, you should have bought lumber. Nobody thought about that one. But look at where it is today. Incredible rise throughout this period. This is huge news. When you see what was the biggest company in the world just a few years ago, Exxon booted from the Dow Industrials in major embrace of tech. This to me is just so significant when you can see how the market has changed. It was literally the biggest company in the world and today the value has continued to decline. I thought this was interesting, wanted to bring it up to you because you can see not just what, what's going on with Tesla, but I wanted to highlight this because so many economies rely on the auto manufacturing. And I've talked about it a lot, not just because people are taking on way too much debt when they buy their cars, not what we're seeing with the trends of car purchases going more towards rather taking an Uber, ride sharing and so on. No, no. When you have these factories that are making these vehicles, Vehicles. This produces a lot of income for that particular city. When the car manufacturer moves out, you got big problems. Nobody can fill the void. We've seen this in areas, look at Detroit, for instance. Big problems there. Well, I wanted to give you a little look at this, how much the 19 major car brands make every second. On the top of the list, Volkswagen, $9,200. All the way at the bottom, number 19, $780. That's Tesla. It just goes through, you can see all the different car manufacturers, but the reason I bring it up is really just a prop because I want you to think about all these different companies that have not been doing well and how their economy will be impacted by, of course, more offshoring or simply the elimination of the production of these vehicles. Economists see a chance of a double dip recession according to this survey. I don't think it's necessarily important to look at what the economists say, what the analysts say, but we always need to worry about that. Because if you look at what's going on with a V-shape recovery, as they love to say, it often looks that way with a W, doesn't it? You don't really know that until it happens. I don't know what's going to happen personally, but I can tell you right now, there are so many risks that are not being highlighted. And when we see this constant risk on mentality, it's worrisome. There's no doubt about it. Powell set to deliver profoundly consequential speech changing how the Fed views inflation. That's right. They are supposedly, we'll see what happens anyway, going towards this 
average inflation targeting, meaning the Fed will allow inflation to run higher than normal for a period of time. Yes, yes, they're going to let it go an inch higher. By the way, they haven't been able to get it to 2%, according to their calculations anyway. They have not been able to get it to this 2% mark. They've been trying for all of this time frame here, over a decade now, but this time around, they are going to do so. How much more money are they going to have to print to get their fake core PCE inflation rate to actually hit 2% and beyond? Imagine this. What are they going to be doing on the internals behind the scenes to make that happen? This is unbelievable. I'm interested to see that speech. Of course, I will have that information for you when it comes out. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. Hit that thumbs down button and you're supporting me as well. If you want to learn how to sell stuff online, if you want to understand e-commerce for free, I have a course, the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to understand the financial system, all the details are in these two books. Definitely check it out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook instead, TheMoneyGPS.com. Wait a second, don't go anywhere. Have you seen this video? If not, definitely check it out. A lot of information, talking about the risks, talking about what's happening today. Click it, I'll see you there.